welcome to a slightly smaller iteration of what it's like to be a parent. I am Mike, aka the Mecha Man, and I'm driving in a horrible lot. So sorry uh, about that. There's a lot of crud and stuff in the, the area. Um, I've been having some difficulty getting to the podcast, uh, and so I feel like a driving method um, with a stationary camera, not in the line of sight, uh, would be a better setup for me to be able to do. As I adjust AC. Um, but yeah, uh, kind of the reason why I'm doing this this one, uh, especially, um, I had to do something that I. I fully don't agree with, but it took me a little bit to come to okay with, um, and that's pets. Um, I personally do have two cats. We have, you know, the little one as well, uh, and we found uh, this dog close to where we live. Uh, we picked it up. We kind of took it in for a little bit, uh, not even a month. Uh, which is kind of why I haven't been doing, because we moved, and then we had uh, my wife's school started back up, so her job started again, uh, and then the dog. And so with all that, those changes, it was making it hard for me to do the podcast. Um, but we we had this dog. Um, sorry for the bumps. It's, it's on a stand. Uh, we had this dog, and for about a month, we're trying to make it work. We're trying to make it work because we're fostering to take care of this dog. We're trying to make it work. And lo and behold, it comes to a point where it, it was too much stress for us because she was still technically a puppy. Where my wife would get up in the middle of the night to let the dog out, which having a child, you already know, that's n- nothing new. Uh, and then after that you're sitting there going well okay what what else could have been wrong that you have to have this puppy well with my child being two two and a half uh and the puppy having accidents inside having to clean up the accidents between when we get home and before we put the child to bed was causing a lot of stress on us uh, because as the child is very curious as to what is this brown thing that shouldn't be here on the floor Uh, and so the child would want to pick it up or the dog would go on the child's toys and we don't know until all of a sudden we are cleaning it up and it's like that right there is building stress and anxiety because we don't want our child this is how we live we don't want our child to have to touch dog pee we don't want our child to have to touch dog poo um and we didn't know anything about this dog. Uh, it was other than it was kind of like a Chihuahua rat terrier mix is what my guess was because I know a little bit about dogs, but I didn't know enough to determine what it was. So it's very hyper. It's very loving. It's very endearing. And I told my wife because I knew in my gut right away that we, because my wife just started work for about a month, we were getting into a rhythm of that. Uh, I knew right away that we cannot have this dog. Having this dog uh, is a lot of stress because we don't know if it's housebroken. We don't know where it came from. We don't know the history of it. We don't know what shots it had or anything. (coughs) So not knowing any of that and still fostering a home for the dog, it It caused stress. It caused a lot of stress between me and my wife. I'm in a stoplight, so. Um, It caused a lot of stress between me and my wife of having to take care of the dog, having to take care of the child, and the extent of having to clean up after it. I don't like putting up animals or children up for adoption. I believe that you should be able to man up and do it. But it comes to a point where you can't and knowing when you can't is important 
knowing when to reach out and ask for help is important. We didn't have, we don't have anyone that we could reach out and go, Hey, can you come over and walk the dog for us? Because we're not home. We had, by the way, we had the dog in a crate. I don't believe of having a dog in a crate is a good idea. I, I personally don't, but we had to, uh, the dog was very sneaky, was able to jump and climb baby gates. Uh, so we had the dog in a crate. The dog would go to the bathroom in the crate. And the first thing that we do when we come home would have to be wash the dog. One person take the dog out. The other one's cleaning the crate. Okay, now we can sit there. And it was too much of a hassle to go and do that and then take care of the, the family and do the dinner and take care of our child when our child should be first. But we can't take care of the child first because the dog would get hyperactive and start running around with inside this crate and slinging urine and poop everywhere because it's in there and it's like it's hyper it wants to see us and that's the hard part is that the dog wanted to see us and we weren't able to give the dog the time of day because we felt like our child was more important but we were forced to put this dog and making sure that the, the way that we had made the child more important was making sure that the dog was cleaned and the cage was cleaned so that way it was a clean environment for our child. And that's the hard part is in order to put our child first as a parent, we had to put the dog first and we didn't feel like that was, that was good or conducive to us. Uh, the, and the stress with having a dog. Um, I know for some people, the stress of having a cat is very uh, bad because of the clawing. Uh, we actually have two cats, and I use a, an old fabric uh, uh, office chair, and that's their scratching post. They don't want to scratch anything else but the scratching post, or but this chair. Even though we bought scratching posts, they still want this chair, and it's fine. It's an old chair. It sits in the corner. They hit, sit on it. There's cat fur all over it. That's theirs. I don't care. We clean up the litter box. Cats are a little bit less maintenance. You clean up the litter box once a day, uh, probably once a week to once a month. You dump the whole thing and fill it back up and you're good. Make sure there's food and water. Cats are usually very simple to maintain. A dog takes more responsibility. You have to get up. You have to get outside. You have to let the dog go for the bathroom. Did the dog do all of its business? And that was the part where we would let the dog out. We're out there for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes and still nothing. So we're like, uh, what's going on with this dog? Is it going to the bathroom? Is it not going to the bathroom? I think this is my road. It seems like my road. They're doing a lot of construction around here. Um, and so I'm actually driving away from the Humane Society of where I had to relinquish ownership is what they said of this dog because apparently in Florida if you have a stray for 30 days it's considered you're considered the owner and I didn't I didn't understand it I didn't I don't feel like that's that's an agreement even though we called and uh, like I was on the forum saying you know look uh, looking for lost dog I put ads up and pets are a huge responsibility and it's just it's hard so for those that have pets have children you guys either a are home in less than 12 hours or you're gone from home for less than 12 hours you have a support system or something of that matter because for us you know we're this is our first child we're still learning stuff um, our child still teaches us a lot of stuff and we're amazed that she knows how to unlock an iPad, use the iPad, find her favorite shows, even though we help type and spell stuff out, but she knows what her favorite shows are and does her favorite shows. It's very interesting that the child can do that. Um, and so we had like, and learning and having pets and children is not it's not hard it's not difficult it's just for us the amount of stress of even though we're home at 6 30 or 6 
o'clock in the afternoon or four, five o'clock would be my wife getting home uh, at times. We're gone from basically six, seven o'clock in the morning until about five, six o'clock at night. So we're gone a good chunk of the day and to devote time to what we didn't know is a true puppy, which does take time. We couldn't devote the time needed for the dog. Once we got home, we would do... We, we had to take the dog out two, three times from when we got home at 5, 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock while trying to get our child home and situated, get us home and situated, put all our lunch boxes and shoes and clothes away, take our showers... Take our showers. Um, phone just said 20%. Uh, take our showers. Give our child a bath. Cook dinner. Clean up dinner. Put our child to bed. It was that was too much, and we had to throw in the towel. As much as that sucks and is very painful, uh, I was be, I'm being reaffirmed by the Humane Society that because she's such a young age, she will still find a home. Um, because she's under six months is what they said. So I was like, wow, really? We didn't know that. Um, but we tried to give her the love and attention that she needed, that she was required, and it was too much for us. So my thoughts about this are, I don't like giving up anything for adoption. I feel like you need to work hard to get everything that is needed. Uh, that adoption should not be an option is my like setting the, the child or the dog or the pet or the bird like I don't feel like putting things up for adoption should be an option that's my mom that's my thought that's how I feel I was raised um, that you need to man up and do your job for us we manned up, we tried to do the job, and we couldn't sustain the job. It was causing too much conflict between me and my wife, us and our child, the, the other pets. It was, it was too much for what we had going on, and we had to give in. But we gave in the smart way, by either asking for help, Or what we did is we knew that taking the dog to a humane society, a no-kill shelter, we knew that we would be doing the right thing. And doing the right thing is important. To you, to your mental health, to your child. And, you know, there's another day that we we will have another dog. But for us, where we're at physically in reference to our jobs because I travel an hour one way close to an hour one way my wife travels about 30 minutes to an hour one way to and from work that that, that right there is a lot uh, and so it's just I want to put forth and give you guys a heads up of ask for help don't be afraid to ask for help as parents as possible parents as seasoned parents as my mom wants to put it. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Know when you need to ask for help. And do research on the avenues that you need for help. So I'm going to leave everyone with that because my phone's starting to die. Um, I'd like to say also I'm sorry for not putting out any other podcasts. I had one in store uh, right as we were getting ready to move for the thoughts and minds of you know, a pregnant woman before she's going to give birth. Um, she already had two kids, uh, but the timing for our scheduling did not match up and she already had the child. Uh, and so it was like, <sighs> so actually it was for a new parent. Uh, and then I had another one, uh, that I still planned on doing. I just need to get back into the swing of things. And, uh, set up an interview with her so 
but I am Mike, your host, aka the Mecha Man. Uh, this will be on my YouTube channel uh, for video if you're watching this. If you're not watching this and you're listening to it on uh, uh, podcast services, uh, I do do Twitch streams, live streaming. If you don't know what that is, uh, you can Google it if not. Uh, and, and if that's not your cup of tea, don't worry. Um, this is a podcast all about what it's like to be a parent. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, please rate, subscribe, and give it a thumbs up. Let other people know uh, about the podcast, other parents, other possible parents. Uh, and, yeah, thank you guys so much. Peace.